Today on Shop Nation, I start the construction of my new workbench, which includes a brand new design, a new set of plans, and a whole lot more functionality. What's up you guys, welcome. I'm Travis and this is Shop Nation. And it's with a lot of anticipation, mostly on my part, that we finally start my new workbench build. Now if you watch some older videos from my last shop, you remember the ultimate workbench, which was quite literally the centerpiece to my workshop. I really liked how I can use it as an outfit table, as an assembly table, it had a ton of storage, it had built-in dust collection, it had electrical, I missed the thing. And now that we're in my new shop, I need to make a replacement. And you're probably wondering, why didn't you just take it with you? Why is it not in your new shop? Well, long story short, I had to leave behind because the movers were a bunch of dingleberries. My initial heartbreak led to a bit of optimism because now I have the opportunity to build a new workbench based on everything I've learned over the last couple of years. Also, one thing that I came to realize is that a four foot by eight foot workbench is just a tiny bit too big for most home shops or wood shops. And that actually includes my new shop. So I think this is a great opportunity to design a smaller workbench that maybe incorporates a lot of what was in the ultimate workbench with maybe even a little bit more. So you can see currently sitting in the middle of my workshop is the compact workbench, which isn't really a workbench in itself. It's more like an auxiliary piece of equipment, but if you've got the space like I do, I really prefer to have a much bigger workbench that you can incorporate a lot of features in and spread your work out. So I'll be relocating this off to the side and where I'm standing here is going to be the giant island centerpiece of my new workshop. Now the workbench that I'm gonna be building is more of like an outfeed table slash workbench, and it's meant to sit right on the other side of your table saw. And if you'll remember, I don't have a table saw, but I do have one on order, which is exciting because I can get back to making all kinds of stuff. So actually I've been putting in a ton of thought and work in the design of this workbench, and that started with a little bit of outreach to you guys on both YouTube and Instagram. I made a post asking about general dimensions of the workbench. What I was originally thinking was a four foot by six foot workbench bench for my particular space. I think that size works really well as an outfit table and workbench while still allowing you to incorporate a lot of features into the design. And to be honest, the feedback was 50-50. Half of the camp thought that 48 inches as a width was a little bit too wide for a lot of garage spaces, and the other half thought the size was perfect. So because of that, I've actually been planning three different size workbenches. Now the one that I'm gonna build in this video series is the four foot by six foot workbench because that just works perfect for my particular space. But I do also realize that a narrower version of this workbench would work really well in the other half of people's shops. And then finally, the third design is purely just an outfeed table. I realize that some people don't want a full fledged assembly table with their outfit table. Some people prefer that separate. So I've got a dedicated design just for an outfit table. So if you're interested in the plans for any of them, they should be down below. At a minimum, when I release this video, I'll have the plans ready for the workbench that I'm building. The other two will probably be added shortly after. So I personally found that a really good way to make shop furniture like big workbenches is to create a sort of frame and then build on top of that. So in the case of the ultimate workbench, I used a combination of some laminated one by fours to create sort of an exoskeleton that all the different pieces sort to fit in within the workbench. The concept I'm using for this design is very similar, except for instead of one by four laminations, I'm gonna use laminations of two by fours. This makes things really approachable, anybody can do it, and there's a couple steps you can take to make it a little bit nicer, but really, you could just use two by fours by themselves. So the first thing we need to do is cut down our pieces to size, glue up our laminations, and then do a little bit of optional post-processing. All right, enough yapping, let's get to building. Here is a really good example of how useful a stop block can be when you're batching out parts. Okay, so the laminations are pretty straightforward. Add a lot of glue and then spread it out evenly, like butter. I made a little mark here on the end to help align both pieces. It just really needs to be close. We'll end up trimming these down later. Now instead of busting out 2,000 clamps and making a predictable clamp joke, I'm just gonna add some screws evenly distributed down the length to hold this lamination together while the glue dries. Now you can take these screws out afterwards, but I actually left them in for some added strength. The smaller vertical laminations are exactly the same, except for you're driving the screws in from the opposite side. This will make a lot more sense later. Yeah. 
All right, with the glue dried on the laminations, now we need to mill them down to their final size. Now I purposefully left the ends of each lamination a little long so I could trim them to exact size, but we also need to shave off the rounded edges on each side of the two by fours. Now technically to do this correctly, you need both a planer and a jointer if you want perfectly square and perpendicular edges, but there's a lot of people out there that don't have both of those tools and you can get by by doing it a couple of other ways. In the past, I've used a table saw to clean up the edges of the two by fours. And as long as you're starting with pretty straight two by fours, this is an okay way to do it. But I recently purchased a little six inch joiner, which I don't know if that makes me a woodworker now, but I'm gonna use the little joiner to clean up the edges of these big laminations. Now this being a tabletop joiner and it's a six inch joiner, it might be kind of difficult considering the longest piece is about six feet long, but we'll give it a shot. So all of you fine woodworkers out there are probably cringing right now as you watch this plywood worker attempt to use a joiner. But hey, it actually worked out pretty well for this application. I set the cut depth to 1 16th and made two passes per side. That allowed me to sneak up on my final dimension of 3.25 inches. This was by far the sketchiest part. Can't say I would recommend doing this, but hey, like I said, it worked. And by the way, really happy with the dust collection on this thing. I mean, I barely found any shavings when I was done. You know what they say, clean shop is a clean mind. Yeah, I forgot. So this is why I left all of those pieces long. Now I can trim them all down to exact size. So I started by driving one screw in at each corner just to keep the frame together. And then got it perfectly square and drove in a total of five screws at each joint to really lock it in. So if you notice, there's actually no screws visible from one whole side. While those dry, I'm gonna prep all of the stretchers and braces needed for the workbench. Most of these are held in place with pocket hole screws and then they're milled down to the same 3.25 inch height. Yeah, at this point I just totally gave up even trying the dust collection. Lastly, just cutting out a couple of panels before we actually start assembly. All right, so with all of the prep and milling done, we can now get to assembly. But first, I wanna clean up the lap joints on all four corners of each side of the frame. This will make sure we don't have any high spots and the top will sit nice and flush on the workbench. Okay, here is where a big ass clamp comes in handy. I went out and bought a couple of these 48 inch clamps and it made my life so much easier. We all know pocket hole screws tend to shift your work pieces as you're driving them in, so clamping really helps prevent that. 
So for casters, I'm gonna use a little bit different design than previous workbenches, and they're these little machine casters with a retractable foot. You turn this wheel, which lowers the foot, and raises the table up off the wheel. These things are stupid strong and rated for a combined 2,200 pounds. Pretty sure my table will break well before the casters. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I spent a ton of time designing this thing, which is probably why it looks like it's an odd order for assembly. There is a plan, I promise. And if you ever wondered how professionals manhandle full sheets of three quarter inch plywood, it is exactly not like that. And with that, I think we've reached a good stopping point, at least for part one of this build series. There's gonna be a couple more episodes following this where I finish out the workbench, including all of the storage, the dust collection, the electrical, everything. So far, I am really stoked, not just how the workbench turned out, but also how easy and error-free my plans have been so far. This is one of the major advantages of making the plans first and then building the project. I know that when I release the plans, they work. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you are not already subscribed, consider doing so so you get notified when the next episodes come out on this workbench build series. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like. And most importantly, I want to know what you think about it so far. I realize that some of the features and bracing positions seem kind of obscure right now, but I promise they all have a purpose. And as a reminder, the build plans are available down below. And there will also be an additional two different variations of this workbench, which should be available down below, maybe not initially. I will see you guys on the next installment of this project, and as always, continue to pursue shop greatness. Yeah.